Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy, and Samus Aran is back. So it's time to talk about Metroid Dread, because we get nerdy nightly, and we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. The latest adventure from the Metroid series, Metroid Dread, is finally out for the Nintendo Switch. I am not going to lie to you, y'all. This is the most fun I've had with a Metroid game in a while. I think that the Metroid Prime games have really been the focus of a lot of people's attention spans over the last few years. Everyone is waiting for Metroid 4, but in my opinion, Metroid has always been best served by the 2D side-scrolling adventure that we are getting again here. I think that this is where the franchise started, and I think that this is always where the franchise has been at its best. Metroid Dread is the fifth game in this franchise. It comes from Mercury Steam, the studio that brought us Metroid Samus Returns, the remake of Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Don't know why they did that naming thing, but they did it. Mercury Steam brought a lot to the game in their remake there with some directional shooting as well as some other abilities that they have actually brought back into Metroid Dread. But Metroid Dread is the fifth entry in the tale of Samus Aran as she heads to planet ZDR after a X. Here's where I'm gonna start. If you don't know Metroid stuff, the plot of this game will make no sense. Is it still a very good game to play? Absolutely. Fantastic game. I'm gonna start there. I'm just gonna spoil my review. It's awesome. There are a couple of caveats. There are a couple of things that I didn't like about it. I'll get to those in a minute. But if you don't understand the Metroid stuff, the story, the world of this game, coming into Metroid Dread, I would recommend going to watch a YouTube video that explains the plot up until Metroid Dread. There's a couple of great ones. I actually watched one the other day because I was like, what am I forgetting? And there were a couple of things I forgot. But this is a game that is very much the fifth entry in a franchise that has been going on for a long time. And it doesn't spend a lot of time filling you in on the past. It does a little bit. It gives you a couple snippets here and there. But for the most part, this game is very interested in moving the story of Samus forward and into this finale, honestly, of a five game franchise, including some references to other games that aren't in the 2D side scroll. There's some 3DS game references in here. It's kind of a wild ride all the way through. But I'm going to try and give as much of a synopsis of the plot as I can. In the world, there used to be these things called Metroids. They're natural. They were the natural predator of the X. Now, Samus killed off all of the Metroids, which caused a rise in the X, which then Samus had to go take care of. She got infected by the X, and in order to save her, her people had to use the last of the Metroid DNA to create a vaccine that cured her of the X, which in turn made her part Metroid. All right? In doing so, she destroyed all of the Metroids, and we believe she destroyed all of the X. Until, at the beginning of this game, a mysterious signal reveals video of an X on the planet ZDR and Samus is sent as the only person with this Metroid-driven vaccine to the planet to stop the X parasite from replicating, spreading out into the galaxy, and causing mayhem and destruction as the bioweapon that it could potentially be. Upon landing on planet ZDR, she is immediately attacked by a Chozo. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> I love, I, I love trying to talk about Metroid and thinking about people who have never played these games, hearing these words and being like, what are you talking about? Um, his name is Ravenbeak. He's the big bad of the game. He whoops your butt. And wouldn't you know it, you wake up on the planet and all of your abilities are gone because dang it, this is a Metroid game. And, and there's one thing that we do. You show up to a planet, all of your abilities get taken away, and then you spend 9 to 13 hours getting your abilities back so that you can fight the bad guy who took away your abilities at the beginning of the game. We have a structure, and I promise you, Metroid Dread in no way deviates from it. What it does do is it updates the controls and the play style of this 2D side-scroller to the modern world in a really beautiful way. Samus moves around the world of Metroid Dread so fluidly once you get a handle on it. It takes a minute to kind of get the, the tempo of the jumping, the tempo of the grappling and the grabbing, 
but but once your fingers get a little bit of muscle memory for this game, it is kind of wild how quickly you can have Samus bouncing around these levels and the amount of motion and ability to move Samus and to move Samus quickly to dodge or to attack or even to just explore is really one of the highlights of the game. The combat is a variety of difficulties. Regular enemies, for the most part, are fairly simple, all the way up to bosses that are so frustrating and painful, headache-inducing, that you might as well be playing a Dark Souls game. But even those bring so much joy because that, that sense of accomplishment when you finally beat one of them is, is oh, it's strong on this one. New to the franchise are the new Emmys, the E-M-M-I's, the invincible stalker robots and their zones that they patrol where you're going to have to use a little bit of stealth, a little bit of cunning, and just, just honestly a lot of patience to get by them. <laughs> They're frustrating. <laughs> I hate them. I was so excited in the trailers. I was like, oh, they look fun. I hate them so much. But I beat all of them, and I feel really good about that. Because of that, I think that Metroid Dread has a tendency to be more difficult than any past Metroid game has ever been. And as a fan of this franchise, who found this franchise when I was quite young, I, I think I was maybe four or five, I think that this game might be too hard for younger fans, particularly under like 13. Maybe I'm underestimating children in saying that, but it did feel like a grown-up version of Metroid in a way that I really enjoyed as someone who enjoys a harder experience. I typically choose harder video game settings, but I play a lot of games. And I think that if someone is a bit more of a casual gamer coming into Metroid Dread, I think that the difficulty might be off-putting to some people. In terms of the look of the game, I would like to say that it is fantastic. It looks really solid most of the time. I played the majority of the game on the original Nintendo Switch that I bought years ago, and then played the last probably third of the game on the new OLED Nintendo Switch. And I played some chunks of it on televisions just to see what the docked experience was like. On the old Nintendo Switch, it looked pretty good for the most part. I think the new OLED Switch might be the best way to play this game because to be honest, the game doesn't upscale super well for the docked experience. It's a Switch game. There is a top limit for how good it can run. And unfortunately, because of how fast this game moves at times, particularly in the big boss fights on a big television, I, I have a 52 inch television, on that screen, it just starts to get a little bit muddied and the Switch can't really put out a high enough resolution image for you to enjoy the look of the game as well as it is designed. The world itself is really beautiful. A lot of the times you're playing on a 2D plane, but the world extends into the back of the plane really well. And what's going on in the background is really beautiful. The way that Samus moves is really beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful things happening. It is just happening at a resolution that I think doesn't necessarily do the art style justice. One thing I do want to give them credit for is how incredible the sound design of the game was, and honestly the world design. ZDR is broken up into a variety of different biomes that you have to fight your way through throughout the game and then go back to either to re-fight your way through under different conditions or with different weapons or to explore to find power-ups. And each of those different biomes had a very unique life and sound and feeling to it in a way that made the... I, I played through the game in about 9 hours and 20 minutes. I've heard uh, the average is between 10 and 13 hours. But it broke up that time into an experience that didn't feel belabored in any way. It was changing so constantly that it felt like you were constantly getting to have a new experience with the game just in a different place. And you were going on this adventure with Samus in a way that kept the entire experience somewhat new the entire way through in a way that I really enjoyed. This is taken even a step further by the boss fights, which are difficult the entire way through while also managing to escalate in difficulty the entire way through. I thought the way they managed to make every individual boss a fun, but also difficult, but also very new challenge was one of the highlights of the game for sure. The one kind of criticism I do have of the game is that for a game that's built so much on exploration, the story 
keeps you fairly railroaded to the point where there were times in the game where there was only one way forward. And that one way forward is shooting a specific panel with a specific weapon. Later on in the game, they give you tools to be able to figure this out a bit easier. But there were a couple of times early in the game where I was concerned that I was soft locked until I just accidentally shot a certain floor tile and was able to progress from there. I'm not saying that you should never have anything like that in a video game. It just did have this energy to me of like, oh, it was something dumb, not like, oh, I needed to solve a puzzle. It was, oh, I, I just needed to shoot the floor in that corner, I guess. Cool. Having said that, that is two minor moments in an almost 10 hour experience for me that for the other 99.5% of the experience was really solid and had me picking up my Switch at every possible opportunity to get to the end of this game. Not only that, but as someone who loves Metroid and has been playing these games his whole life and loves this character and wanted to see the story progress and wanted to see where they were going with the character of Ravenbeak and some of the other characters that appear in this game, I was so satisfied by the twists and turns of the story the entire way through in a way that, like I said at the beginning of the review, I don't think this story will be very satisfying for people who don't play Metroid games. But also, I don't know how you tell a story at this point in the Metroid franchise that does satisfy both. If you are concerned there's going to be too much inside baseball for you to enjoy this game, you really won't. The gameplay and, and the way that you play through the world is really built for a one-off experience. You don't need to have played any Metroid games. You don't have to play any 2D side-scroller games, although it will help because some of these bosses are hard. They're hard. Those are my thoughts. I think that Mercury Steam pulled a rabbit out of a hat with this one and gave me an experience that I didn't even know I really wanted. I was excited for another 2D Metroid experience. I didn't expect it to be as deep as this one ended up being. And this gives me a lot of hope that we could get more 2D experiences like this for the Switch. Maybe a new Castlevania game made by these people. Give Mercury Steam Castlevania, see what they would do with it, because I think it would be a really worthwhile experience at this point. This was a fantastic game. This is maybe the best game I've played so far in 2021 which is kind of crazy, but it, it, it just, I loved it. I really, really loved it. And I'm excited to try and play through on hard mode, which I haven't done yet. And honestly, some of those boss fights, I'm scared to do it. But I think that what Mercury Steam created is worth putting the time, sweat, and what will definitely involve tears to get through that harder mode of a game that's already pretty difficult. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't totally understand, hit that dislike button. It's what it's there for. As always, you can follow us over on Twitch or you could follow us, support us even, over at fanhouse.app slash nerdynightly or patreon.com slash nerdynightly. It's the same in both places. We just wanted to be available where you might be more comfortable giving us your money so that we can pay our rent. Gotta love content creation. Am I too honest on here? Probably. Do something nerdy tonight. Bye.